Let me see if I can give you an update on the tower here. CQ, 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 this is Kilo Echo 4, Whiskey Mike Foxtrot. Roger, Roger, you are blasting into the state of Ohio, 59 plus one. Welcome back and thanks for being here. My name is Scott and it's been a little while since I last talked about my antenna setup here. Every year I remove the roof rack so I can do the car's annual paint maintenance and I discovered that after two years I had another internal rack I'm going to call it a failure, but nothing broke or anything like that. It was just some warping of material inside the rack. In the long run, it would not be safe or secure. So instead of replacing it with a like rack, as I did the first time it happened two years ago, after only one year of service with a heavier tower, I decided I was going to make some changes. And so this time I focused on weight savings. And this is a result of my weight savings project. Now, the rack that I really wanted was out of my immediate budget, but I was able to find the lost parts for this rack here, which was my very first roof rack on this car. So this rack is by Rhino Rack. It is a flush bar design. It doesn't have the crossbar sitting on top and therefore using little M4 bolts that stick up to hold it in place, which is where my point of failure was on the other rack. This one, the crossbars actually go into the I'm going to call them towers. Hopefully it's stronger, more contact area with the crossbar, although this is plastic, so we'll see how that goes in the long run. I got rid of the micro tower. That was a fairly heavy gauge steel tower, and it took me a little while to figure this out because we, we can't all know everything, but towers are really made for holding heavy HF antennas, big stacks maybe. And this setup here, this is the same stuff I've always had. Well, with a little change, I'll, I'll, I'll cover the small change here in a minute. But what I did is by removing the Roan 25G tower topper from this rack, that took 28 pounds off right away. But it wasn't a total of 28 pounds of savings because I then had to add these supports. So these supports are basically made from three quarter inch, electrical metal tubing commonly referred to as conduit and to my surprise this setup has been very very solid uh, whenever I test it I mean I give it a shake and I used to be able to hear a little bit of click 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 from the thrust bearing a little bit of flex in the rack and and the the unistrut <laughs> there's just nothing this thing is super solid so I'm very happy with it these these pieces here these four pieces they weigh about five pounds when you add them all up plus whatever the hardware weighs the hardware is smaller so I saved some weight there in hardware as well and then I saved another bunch of weight by switching from the full height unistrut this is actually super strut which is available to big box stores but I switched to the half height half height weighs half as much as the full height super strut and that's because the half height is 14 gauge where the full height is 12 gauge. And so I have saved 50% by switching to the shorter strut. So when I take the fact that, well, first, there's a couple things going on here. First, because I don't have the tower on the roof anymore, I don't need the tilting feature that I used to have. And so without the tilting feature, I can just lift the antenna up there and I don't need the, uh, the additional beam here to support the hinge. So now instead of having six pieces of super strut for a total weight of, I wanna say they weigh 38 pounds altogether, I have just these five. And just these five weigh 15 and a half pounds. And so I've saved another 20 pounds or so. All said, I have shaved about 45 pounds off of this setup. Oh, the final piece of weight savings is up here at the top. Those of you who've been watching my channel for a little while might have noticed that I don't have the Moxon 6 meter up there anymore. And that's six pounds of weight up really high on the mast. And so I took that off and now I have this uh, two pound six meter loop at the top. And so that has saved a lot of swinging weight. I missed an opportunity while recording on a nice overcast day to talk about the antennas themselves. So I'm going to take a moment to make this an all-inclusive video and tell you about everything on the roof. Now the tower and Yagi's are not on the car right now, so I'm going to put up this photograph here and walk you through it. 
Oftentimes at meets or in person, I will describe these antennas starting at the top as 6, 2, 222, and 432. So at the top, the 6 meter antenna is an HO loop by M squared. It is a folded dipole half wave. Gain is around 3 dBd, which makes my effective radiated power, or ERP, around 150 watts. Right below that, these uh, Yagis here, they're all Rover Specials by Directive Systems and Engineering. They have 8-foot booms. The 2-meter Yagi is 6 elements. The gain is 10.1 dBd. That makes my... ERP in the neighborhood of 1200 watts. Right below that is the 222. It is 10 elements. Gain is 11.1 dBd. Now my output on 222 is only 50 watts and so the ERP is around 500 watts. The 432 is here at the bottom. This is 13 elements. Gain on it is 13.2 5 dBd, I think. I can't remember what the decimal is. 0 0.5, 0 0.6. That makes my ERP. Now, this is uh, connected to an 80 watt amplifier. So, my ERP here is around 1200 watts. Moving to the verticals up here in the front over the passenger door is my dual band antenna every day. This is hooked up to my ID5100. This is a Diamond NR770HBNMO. The antenna here in the back over the rear passenger door is Yesu's ATAS120 Alpha. This is an easy button when it comes to working with the FT891 and certain other Yesu radios. It's not necessarily the best HF antenna that you can buy, but it certainly is the most convenient. And you can see that I have extra bonding straps here too, because bonding is relatively important for the ATAS and for HF in general. So the uh, antenna is bonded to my Unistrut, and then the Unistrut is bonded to the, it's the door jam. Up over the driver's door, this is a Diamond CR320. It's on an NMO mount, and this is a tribander, so 2 meter, 222, and 432. I primarily use this for my 222 radio because my transverter, it'll do all modes. And so when I don't have Yagi's on the roof, I connect this antenna to the transverter. And I also have the dual band output of the FTA57 connected to this antenna when there's not Yagi's on the car. Now this funky looking antenna here in the back is a WeBoost cellular signal booster. These are very common on field work trucks. I saw them everywhere in New Mexico in the oil fields as I was driving the lonely highways out there. And I had one as well, so I must have been the only passenger car that had one. <laughs> uh, RVs and overlanders use them. And so they're, they're great. When you have a weak cellular signal, this pulls it in and makes it stronger. At the back of the roof is what used to be my primary NMO port. This is where my dual bander used to be connected. But now, because I frequently put a cargo box on the car, I needed something stubby that would fit under the cargo box. And so this is what I've chosen for my GMRS antenna location. Yes, I could put a larger, more effective GMRS antenna on the car. But realistically, I use GMRS for very close-in communications with traveling with family or other vehicles or something in a group. So I don't need a high-performance antenna here. Behind that, this, this little shark fin here is my original WeBoost antenna. I, I haven't taken it out in part because maybe I'm being a little lazy, but also if for some reason I have to take down this, a friend of mine called it my Tiki Torch, but so if I ever have to take off the Tiki Torch antenna for some reason or remove the rack, I still have another antenna to plug into my WeBoost, so I still have functionality there. On the very back, on the hitch, this is my Scorpion mobile HF antenna. This antenna works from 80 meters all the way up to 10 meters if I have a whip on the Scorpion. I keep a capacitance hat on mine and so mine runs from 15 meters to 80 meters. So I use the ATAS for 
six meters through. Well, sometimes I do 20 meters on it, so it depends on what I'm trying to do. Sometimes I'm trying to operate uh, both a two HF bands at the same time, or six meters and HF. That's particularly true if I'm running two instances of uh, FT8. I will run one band on the ATAS and the other band on the Scorpion. So I like having options. The main pitfall of the Scorpion antenna is it blocks my hatch shut, so I don't have access to the trunk when I have the Scorpion mounted. There are fold-over mounts. I might buy one, and it'll let me fold it over, but I, you still have to have tools to fold it over. So it's not. this is not a convenient location, and being on the hitch so low to the ground is not an ideal location, but it is a location that fits on my car. Last but not least are these two antennas on the hood. A lot of people ask, they look at these just as you see them right now and ask, hey, what, what kind of antennas are those? And these are not antennas at all. These are caps uh, underneath our NMO mounts. And I have my choice of NMO antenna to put up there. Now, when I contest and I've got the Yagi's up, I get collision hazards with certain taller antennas. And so I'll take those antennas and move them down to the hood temporarily. I have since mitigated that. I'll share that with you here in just a moment. But what I think I'm going to use these points for now, I do have a citizen band radio in the car, CB, and I don't use it very much. Usually every time I turn it on, I hear a few minutes and then realize why I don't ever turn it on. But they are useful on road trips. And so I will, as needed or desired, put an 11 meter whip on the driver's side mount. That's basically Larson's NMO 27. Most people cut that to work as a 10 meter whip. I have mine cut for 11. And then over here on the passenger side, I have a six meter called the NMO 50 by Larson. And I was using that for six meter FM, but I think what I'm going to do with it now, I have commented in other videos how I wish that I had an SDR transceiver. Somebody turned me on to the idea of using an SDR receiver. And so I think I can monitor six meters with the SDR receiver, and that's a whole lot cheaper than buying an SDR transceiver. So I'm, I'm going to experiment. That's my plan. So the whole Mass and Yagi setup, including that thrust bearing, so basically everything that is above the rotator, all of it, including the four supports, weighs 30 pounds. So when you look at my vertical antennas here, there's this one new one, but it's not an antenna at all. This piece here, <laughs> this is basically, it's a half inch threaded bolt with a one inch spacer and then a one inch PVC pipe slipped over top of it. This gives me a place to put the mast when I pull it off. So what I do is I stand up here in the door reach up well first i reach up there and i loosen up these four bolts and then i stand in the door open the door and i stand up there and i lift it pick it up and then i set it down here and then it rests here on this washer until i can climb down and then i just pick it up and then pull it off so it's not an antenna but i leave it up full time so i don't ever forget it this here is the new home for the mestastic node and you may have noticed that all of my verticals are now on these motorized mounts. These are Diamond K9000 mounts. I need to take these stickers off of them, but I've got them at all four corners now. And that's so that I don't have to decide when and which antennas to unscrew and remove so that I can rotate this tower because now all of the antennas are collision hazards now that I've got the fourth beam up there and uh, especially the ATAS. It's always a collision hazard. It always has been. So I, I used to just take it off. But now I leave it up. And then when I need to stop, I just lower the verticals. So I just drive down the road like this. And then I, I lower the antennas, the verticals, whenever I want to rotate the, the mast there. So that is my setup. What else is different? This is another weight savings. I did not claim this as part of my 45 pounds, but you might notice that I don't have the horizontal loops up anymore. I, uh, I did a lot of the contesting, figuring things out as I went, and for some reason I was really fixed on, well, I bought the loops first because they're cheaper, and it got me into a contest faster. And then I thought, oh, well, I'll use the loops when I'm on the move, 
and that way I can hear no matter which way the car is pointed and then I'll switch to the Yagi's when I park which is why this antenna port here this pass-through has so many ports on it well after a while I just concluded that I don't need all of that uh, it's weight it's collision interference and yeah I did just fine even on the two meters I was able to hear pretty well behind me my most impressive band <laughs> it was it's the 222 band I would say to anybody who's thinking about it I waited because I wanted to wait until I felt like I needed it when I have enough people calling and saying hey do you have 222 and eventually that did happen and then I went ahead and made the buy but now I'm of the mindset of build it and they will come I'm telling you right now if you're even thinking about it do it because it is it has all of the great propagation characteristics of two meters with the clarity of 432. So it's a very quiet band. And of course, it's not very crowded either, so you don't have to compete that much. <laughs> so there you go. There's my pitch for 222. All right, that's all I'm gonna say about all of this right now. That ought to be enough. Let me know if you've got any questions. I just wanted to share an update and what was going on with my tower setup. And because it's so easy to take down, I won't have to leave this up for a week. Uh, waiting for the greatest of weather or even the coolest of weather or whatever it comes up and goes down very quickly so anyway i appreciate you being here see you next time